Why? Because I think there's a lot of unknowns. Um, I can I could talk more comfortably about my writing, but like in the capacity that I know it. So it's like trying to say either it may be a psychological thing. Like uh, there are there's resistance to me selling myself to um, talking my, about myself in that way, or it's like I'm, I'm still not quite sure what my sharpest well, both advantages. You know, it's both because what you don't know, you can't write about, and therefore. You mm -hmm. feel like a poser or it did, yeah. faking it until you make it. What people are interested in is the journey. <clears throat> but how you position and frame it is totally on you. So when you position and frame yourself, like I thought the opening of your last piece was clever. Yeah. But is it the best way to position yourself? No, and now you say it, I'm like, of course not. Because who would want to hire someone for an important piece of work that, when the first thing they say is, I have no experience pretty much, you know, like you say with a surgeon or something, I'm basically saying, Oh, I don't have any experience, but. Um, so it's like fighting, right? When I used to train people to box, I would accentuate their strengths, hide their weaknesses, accentuate your strengths, hide your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You hide your weaknesses in your strengths. Right? So, it's not a matter of, I don't have, I didn't do, I can't say. It's a matter of what I can do, what I can say, what I can demonstrate. So mm. don't focus on yourself. Focus on who you're talking with and meeting them where they're at. And who are them? Who are they? These are high level entrepreneurs okay. who are always on the lookout yep. for incredible talent to okay. help them make more money. That is where you enter the conversation. Yeah. It's like how I jokingly tell people where I look at them, look at the computer. Look at me. Hmm. I put my hand out. Hold on. Brace yourself. This is not about you. <laughs> it's about them. Mm -hmm. So don't make it about you. And a lot of the resistance that you're experiencing will dissipate, dissolve, not exist. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do high level entrepreneurs want what are they looking for talent um results thousands, huh results. results somebody who can speak to the results they want and stand behind their work to get them that's it and our do and do the work to know how to position what the message, the voice, the mechanism, yep. the new cause, the positioning, everything into the mm -hmm. marketplace. You're willing to do that work. I was just writing a couple of things down from the first question you asked about what it is that I think my strengths are. And what I put down was like being able to weave a story, find an angle, have a fresh perspective on something which other people wouldn't think of or see. And then the, the, the attention to detail as well, including um, sticking, like look, revising, sticking in their thinking, processing more than, more than well, anyone really, um, as much as you know, actually looking and paying attention to what's going on in every single passage. <clears throat> but maybe I, I mean I felt a little bit put off perhaps at first when I was looking on Warrior Forum and just seeing people with 
it's kind of tons of testimonials talking about all their successes, all of their. So on the warrior metrics, form, a lot of you know? these people do is they give away their services for free for low prices just to get testimonials. But, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, testimonial testimonials are cool. I, I've never really used testimonials. I don't ask for them. In fact, I can go take screenshots and put them on my website right but now. You're still using social proof in a different way, aren't you? Yeah. I focus on results and showing those results rather than testimonials and it works fine for me. What I would suggest is not to compare yourself to what other people are doing. Focus on what you do better than them. Comparing yourself will bog you down. It'll put you in a low vibrational state emotionally. It'll make it feel overwhelming and clunky and toxic and confusing. And why would you purposely, deliberately choose to put your attention there? What does it accomplish in a positive sense for you? That's bad. It's very, it's negative. It's toxic. If you're looking at other copywriters work to find the positive, do that. Mm -hmm. If you're looking in it to compare, then you're going down a road that is going to bog you down and create. Yeah. Not even to compare just to find a starting point, but clearly it's, yeah. I was trying to find some inspiration, like it's a good way of entering the conversation. But for a lot of them, it just seems to be a lot of blowing your own trumpet, trying to sound like the coolest, most savvy dude on the scene. Which I don't think really is how I position myself anyway. <clears throat> Do you always start with a what if statement? No. Okay. <clears throat> but it's a great way to start writing. Sometimes I'll move it way down. Sometimes mm. I'll replace it with something else. But a what if question does what? It gets you imagining. It uh, circumvents the story you're telling and opens you up to the possibility yeah. that there's something else. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heuristic interrupt. And it's just one option for a heuristic interrupt. But what, what if questions do, they're easy to write. They're easy to get to the core of your messaging of your new cause in this case. And it allows you to dictate your own positioning. And as a copywriter, what you always need to remind yourself is you get to choose where you enter the conversation. You, nobody else. And that's going to be an important thing to remember, no matter if you're writing for yourself or anybody else or for anything else. You get to choose the positioning. You get to choose every element that either connects with me or pushes me away. You heard of this guy, John Palmieri? No. 
you know, why. Okay, no, I just I came across some stuff from him. Seems to be quite quite popular on the forum. On Warrior Forum? Yeah, so Johnny12345. Oh, yeah, he's been on there for years. Okay. That seems to be one of his fishing holes. Now, you establish yourself somewhere, then you, you know, get equity out of it, right? Yep. Do you see where I'm going? Yep. What's next? <clears throat> You're getting towards the idea of integrity, aren't you here? Say it again. You're going towards the idea of like, bringing back integrity. Um, no, just what we're allowed to do and say. We're, we're talking, so the, the thing about compliance and the, and the thing about scalability for the short and long term is obviously making it sound sexy it has to be something that's attractive so we have to make the fact that you can't do what you used to do the way that you used to do it attractive mm -hmm. and that there's a better way now that works now and your mechanism is empathy storytelling you know the, all those things that you talked about yep And the research. You see how this is a much stronger way to enter the conversation. I, you don't need to that. talk about yeah. your experience level. You need to demonstrate where you're at right now. Because it's actually you holding yourself back by focusing mm. on the past version of yourself. Instead yeah. of being who you are right now. Remember, you can't take who you are right now with you if you want fill in the blank. So don't do that. Best advice you ever get. Don't do that. Don't, whatever it is, don't do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here you have the opportunity to demonstrate everything you've discovered in the last handful of months. And what it means for me, the entrepreneur who has millions of dollars to spend and wants to turn those millions of dollars into tens of millions of dollars.
Keep going. What do you think of this positioning and this lead? Break it down. Uh, it's well, it's far more relevant than what it had to what entrepreneurs are experiencing. One of the things that I've seen copywriters who've worked with me the biggest problem that holds them back mm -hmm. is they don't understand this positioning thing that they get to talk to people. They get to start the conversation they want to have in a relevant way to the people that need to hear it. So relevance okay. is huge. And then yeah. the specificity that anchors that relevance is huge. Yeah. I like it. I don't feel like I, without sounding negative, I don't feel like I'm, I have enough ownership of this story because I didn't see it firsthand and I haven't read enough to kind of fill in those blanks in my mind about what's been happening prior to when I arrived on the scene. I and mean, all, here it is. It's, yeah. It was over the top, hyped out, unsubstantiated claims. And those types of campaigns are failing more and more. Mm -hmm. So now we're in the era of real. People want real. Yep. I mean, that, that's the message I've been bringing into the things I've been doing. But again, you can, like, you could sense that it's just a bit shallow. It's just a bit like, right, tell me more. What, is, what does this mean to me? Well, the framing, the, 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 yeah. the way that you framed it neuters the emotional impact. This the, framing accentuates yeah, okay. the emotional impact. Because when you come from a place where you're not confident or you don't believe in yourself, then obviously it's going to come through in the copy, yeah. which it did. So it's like that newbie thing was my defense mechanism. Like, yep. yeah, shit. It's, it's, it's like a calling card saying, I'm not worthy. I'm yeah. not worthy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not what turns people on. They don't want you to wear your insecurities on your sleeve. They want you to turn them on. That's it. Connect with people where they're at and get out of your own way. You can do that right now. And it has nothing to do with not completely understanding the fuckery that's been happening over the last 20 years in digital marketing. And how utterly ridiculous so many of the more than not of the campaigns have been and the damage that it's done to digital advertising and the amount of response or reaction that the digital platforms are taking or, uh, or, or presenting uh, in order to fix the problem and prevent people from just being able to think I can say whatever I want to say to make the sale. That's it in a nutshell. Mm. There's not much more you need to know about that, but maybe doing a little research on uh, a few examples of campaigns that exemplify, find yeah. something from Agora, find their, find that type two diabetes offer that got them pinched. And show in a screenshot, this is what you can't do. How do I know that? because the FTC is coming after Agora hard for these statements. Oh, look at that one. What did they, were there one or two things they said which were just completely? 
Uh, they just mm -hmm. talked about, uh, if I recall, saying that um, you can reverse type 2 diabetes okay. in 30 days, something like that. You just can't say that. Mm -hmm. That's all kinds of no, 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 no. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you can totally change that. I'm just kind of riffing, but you get the idea. Yes? Yeah. So how would you element this out? How would you make this yours? How are you gonna, own, how are you gonna put ownership into this? Um, Starting at the beginning. Well, yeah, well, I'm not gonna just carry on writing. Um, go back to the inception, like, yeah. work out what it, so, so like, I'll tell you what you've got, um, break it down into just the key points that this sort of the, the structure that we've got already, what that message is, come up with the kind of, I don't know, the title or the main point and then start building it out, keeping the same idea, but in my own words, until I've got a narrative that I'm happy with. You know how I say there's a thousand different ways to write about the same thing, right? Yeah. So you can take this, open up your own doc, and put this into your own language. Yeah. So yeah, what is that? Where is this going? Copy talk it, future pace it for me. Um. Well, I'm going from finding a, a problem in the, the current landscape, a reason why the whole advertising effort creative is out of balance, analyzing that, saying what's actually needed, and then finding a way to bring that back into what I offer as a copywriter, you know, sort of fairly humble and logical and straightforward way. Okay, so I'm going to mute okay. myself. I want you to go for about one to two minutes. And as Mike Henderson uh, 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 
promoting this message, naturally speaking. Yep. Allow it to come through you and then immediately feel the clarity that you actually have that you didn't know. Three, okay. two. So as an entrepreneur, the main question that you're going to be asking yourself in 2020, when you're looking to gear up and launch a new product or service is how can I be sure that what I have here is going to fly? How can I convert on cold traffic predictably in a sustainable, consistent way and make sure that my campaign just isn't a big flop? And to understand how we can achieve that, we actually have to take a step back and look at what's been going on for the past decade or more. And to be honest, the environment that we find ourselves in now is a pretty toxic one. There's been a lot of crap, to be honest, put out by marketers who don't have the right ethics, the right standards, the right procedures. They've been writing campaigns with over-exaggerated claims, swiping left, right, and center, throwing out anything just to try and convince people to buy that product. And that worked for a while. For a little while in the early days of the digital age, people would be drawn in and consumers believe what they were seeing. But now more than ever, credibility has gone out the window. People are looking for genuine solutions. People are tired of all the hype and just don't want to buy into it anymore. And as an entrepreneur, that's a problem for you because just going down the same road again isn't necessarily going to convert. And even if it does, it's not necessarily going to do it for more than a very short period of time until people just say, hey, what you're saying is not congruent with what you're offering. So we need a new strategy. We need to come into this marketing paradigm, which is rapidly changing with solutions that are far more authentic, and far more real than the crap that we've seen out there in the past 10 years or so. So my job today, my job in general as a copywriter is to help you navigate through that minefield to be someone, especially as a fresh head on the scene, who can offer the path forward that's going to work in this new paradigm in the 2020s as things change, as compliance gets more and more stringent and the digital platforms that would let you get away with murder in the past decide that that doesn't fly anymore. And if you're going to carry on doing that, you're going to get banned or shut down or get bad quality traffic and it's going to hurt you big time, not just now, but in the long term. So what do we need? We, like I said before, we need to be authentic. We need to make claims that we can actually back up with science. We need a face and voice that's credible. Uh, we may need to make sure that we're not making over-exaggerated hypey claims. We need solutions that are relevant for your space, solutions that um, actually tie into what people are looking for and aren't just junky, hyped up, empty things. Um, we need to have a strong mechanism. We need to have a product that actually has a proven method of achieving what it says to. It can't just be a claim. We need to actually be able to tie that to something and prove that that works. Um, and then as marketers, it's our duty to not just assume that we know what people are going through, but to be able to test and to, to try lots of things out and to see what's actually working because there's no guarantee that even with the best products and the best writing in the world, um, that what you're going to put out is going to connect. So we need to constantly be trying new things, new ways into the conversation in order to arrive at something which works for people. We never know until we test. So lots of testing, lots of data, lots of playing with that until we find the things that work. So why am I saying this? Well, because as I touched on earlier, I do have a fresh perspective. I'm fairly new to, to, to this particular field, um, but I have a long background in business and in writing and in research. Um, and I see that as a strong advantage. Um, one of the main things is, is I understand people. Um, I have a way naturally of um, Vibing with people's energy. I'm a natural empath, so I can kind of understand what people are going through and know how that feels, know how it feels to uh, suffer from a particular condition or problem, um, which makes writing that much more tangible for me when I can see what people's struggles are. Um, I can really connect with those and I can put words on paper that just resonate as opposed to just make highly vacuous claims, which, as we said before, don't really float. So that's one thing which has always um, aided me considerably in, in, in writing stuff which actually has an emotional impact, it's a, a gut punch if you like, for the end reader. 
the other thing I do is I have a very structured, disciplined approach to writing and researching, which again, a lot of copywriters sit down to write with a vague idea in their head and you know, you get circular arguments and a lot of general thinking, but not that level of specificity that's needed. Um, I'm very rigorous. So I, my research background is, is, is part of the reason for that, but just more generally, I like to look at a great amount of data, a lot of information, cast the net very wide and absorb all of that and then absorb as much as I can so that I can then start to do the real magic, which is drawing that net in, distilling what I have, using my mental capacity to draw out all the real nuggets of information in a structured fashion um, and then let that settle and come back to it. And um, when I process that, I have a much greater amount of clarity into where those real uh, light bulbs are in the whole story that, that are going to be the perfect entry points to make a very powerful uh, heuristic interrupt, a conversation starter, which is going to grab people's attention, what the most salient points are in terms of um, convincing people, well, not even convincing them, but making them understand the true value of your product or what hasn't worked in the market before and what, what people are crying out for. So there's tons of stuff, but in order to get there, you really need a efficient, uh, well-managed research process and that's one of the things which I've developed over the years and I can go from masses of noise and information to a very tight important structured narrative which touches on all of the main points so those are the two main things um, and the other thing is I'm full of enthusiasm I'm an extremely hard worker I care I care about your products I care about your business I care about helping the people that you want to help so that's my message um, I don't have any more to say but um, I'm excited about working with you excited about making money with you and excited about talking to you so get in touch more than two minutes <laughs> brilliant so i have a bunch to say the very first minute or so you sounded like a petulant child it's just like i really yeah. don't want to talk about this but <laughs> i'm gonna do it I, it feels like i'm pulling teeth just to get these words out of my fucking mouth i really don't like you i really don't want to work with you I really don't and then about a minute in you started your energy shifted and it started rolling off of your tongue. And then you started having emotion and inflection mm. behind it. And you started really embodying it. And then you lost it a little bit, then you got it back. And, and, and but so you, you had a lot of variances in that yeah. piece. Now, what's interesting is you know more than you give yourself credit for. You are stuck on the white belt mentality when you've already achieved black belt skills. Does that make sense? yeah stop telling the story about being new just don't because okay. what you're yeah. demonstrating is knowledge and skill and awareness and insight and passion and newbies don't have that they can't do what you just did mm -hmm. i want you to look around at the majority of what other copywriters do to try to get business and why they're always stuck at the bottom rung of the of the food chain. It's because they don't actually take the time to do what you took the time to do to really discover this stuff from the inside out. Now it's time to demonstrate it. And that doesn't mean that you need to show up self deprecating. I am new. I haven't been doing this long, but no. just omit that part of the conversation. Focus on what you bring to the table and let the people who resonate with you show up. Yeah. And what I would do is cut, or I could do it for you, cut that piece and send it over to Rev. It'll be like five bucks to transcribe it. I want you to look at your words in copy. I want you to see what your voice is in copy. Because the way that you write is still trying to be somebody else. Does that make sense? I want you to, to, to see when you talk and then you put that in the copy, put those in on the paper so that you can see what your voice looks like without wow. writing it first. And then play with it, clean it up, turn it into writing and accentuate the voice turn the volume up on that voice and yeah, then and then demonstrate that end result when you redo the video so you're saying that 
where I've spoken there with my passion, that's far more my true voice than anything I'm writing currently. It's not far off. And yes, it's not so like you're way sense, my, far away from your true voice. That's not the truth at all. When I'm, when I'm writing, I'm, I've got an ideal in mind. That I'm trying to. You're, you're, when you're writing, you're, you're going toe to toe with your, I can't do this demons. And it shows. More so about yourself than when you write for other that's not attached to you and your self-worth and your value. Okay. One of the best things that you're going to do now, and I highly recommend starting this self-growth journey because it is self-growth, unwinding your value from how much you make or how much you charge for a contract or how much you get paid or how much you make a year. Unwind your ego from that now because there's going to be a lot of ebbs and flows. You're dealing in a bit, you're in a business where people will try to get the most out of you that they can, that they have their own beliefs. You know, like I'll, I'll give you a, for instance, the, that probiotic copy, they didn't like it at all. Uh, I forgot which one, this was the new one, right? Uh, the probiotic copy I wrote last week, they, they hated it. Okay. They hated all of it. Right. What did you, what was the lead about? Or was it just? I don't even remember. Just trying to remember. Anyway, yeah, I get, I get your point. <laughs> but that, you know, that's part of the business. Yeah. You know, what they want is over the top hypey, 2015 stuff mm -hmm. and they're like but we'll run it anyway and i still have to send off an email it's like well if you don't want if you don't believe in it don't run it i'll write you something else i mean it'll take me a day or two but but i, I wouldn't let them use that because it could also be that they're trying to eat as much out of me as they possibly can because that's how people are in this business. Look at what you mm -hmm. just experienced with that ultra scarcity water guy. Oh God, yeah. Can, his final salvo was the, uh, was something else you wanted me to add in as well. I was like, no way. Wow. And that's how people Some are. technical art schools. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and then that's how a lot of people are. Even if they have a lot of money in a, in a decent budget or even a big budget, you know, a lot of people will try to get the most out of it. It's what's interesting though, is the more people pay, you know, I have better work experiences with people that pay me 20,000 versus 8,000. Go figure. I can imagine. The less, yeah. the less people yeah. pay, the more work it typically is. Yeah. Um, I need to get ready for the uh, live. I'm totally doing it off a whim. If you have okay. any products that you want to bring to the table, just like things that you would be curious about how to research for, bring that to the conversation. All right, okay.